6,000 megabytes a second on your network. It is possible. I'm James Gardner, the Cinematech Geek, and I want to show you how to do it. Now, a few episodes ago, I did a video uh, which featured Mellanox, which is a company that actually um, makes the switches and the NICs that allow this to happen. Now, I, I have nothing to do with Mellanox. They didn't pay me for that or anything, although it may look that and some people commented on that, but that's not the case. The reason I did it is because I'm quite excited to encourage the adoption of those sort of technologies into commodity hardware. You know, imagine if you had, you know, 10... 10 gigabit NICs in the back of all computers coming out, or even better, 40 or 100 gigabit NICs. It's, it's possible, there's no reason why we can't, it just has to become a commodity level. So encouraging those companies who make that equipment to become more widely accepted will hopefully allow that te technology to become more commonplace and in our uh, production equipment as standard. But the big issue with this is that, you know, just having a NIC or a switch that can go that fast is only half the equation. The other half is actually having the protocols and the servers which can actually push it out at that speed. And that's quite a difficult situation. And I just wanted to update you with some of the things I've discovered in that area. Uh, and you know, later on down the track, I'll do some more videos and probably do some hands-on and do some exact some demonstrations. But realistically, you know, we're talking about in the video I did where we got uh, a, a switch which is about six thousand dollars and NICs which are about four to five hundred dollars each. Now these are forty gigabit uh, QSPF based switches, um, and I saw a demonstration the other day that some computers talking at over 6,000 megabytes a second between these devices using that equipment. 6,000, you know, we're talking about the fastest SSDs you get in Macintoshes, etc., doing about 600, 700, and these new super duper Intel SSDs that only really go on PCs can do, you know, 1,500 um, megabytes a second on a single thing, single card. Well, we're talking about ca network cards which can do 6,000. 6, so the only really way to feed these cards at the speed that they can go is with, you know, RAID arrays full of SSDs and other high-end equipment. So, you know, this gives you the ability to grow into that um, sort of functionality. But one of the main reasons I wanted to push it into for, for post-production is because as we move off SDI on, on coax and go to SDI on the same network infrastructure that you use for all your files, it sort of makes sense and if it can do all that bandwidth that's there so you can push your SDI images down at any sort of resolution or quality down to any device on your network be it a screen be it a monitor be it a VTR be it another machine it's all possible and reduces the need for SDI equipment but how do we do it how do we push out how do we get a file server that can push out data that fast well apart from needing um, a very fast data subsystem you know you can get fire ones or etc you can build them yourselves pretty easily um, can they push at that that um, line rate well yes and no there's quite a bit of limitations you need to support certain sort of things like what's called RDMA if you've heard of DMA direct memory access in computer memory RDMA is basically a very similar thing but you're doing it over the network uh, it's not going through the CPU so much so it's much faster and that's how you achieve these super speeds but does NFS support RDMA does Samba 3 support RDMA common um, file serving protocols that everyone uses because they're free they're part of um, you get them with uh, a Windows server or you'll get you know a, a, a Linux server of some sort you can use NFS 3 or Samba on there if you want um, so what can they do you know even though you have these massive pipes can you make use of them well yes and no you have to have the most modern versions of Windows to, to do it uh, or a specific versions of Linux implementations and I'll just want to go over them now so you have an idea what you can and can't do and exactly what throughput you should expect uh, I've been talking to some experts on this and got some numbers so if you do have a system which can support RDMA end-to-end -end, like for example off-the-shelf Windows Server with Windows clients you can pretty much push it at line rate so if you know if you've got these 40 gigabit cards or you, you can you know, update them to um, 556 if you're using the right drivers etc you can pretty much run them at 6,000 megabytes a second over those cards using RDMA but if you're using Linux etc it's a little bit more difficult 
You can do RDMA into Linux, but only on um, certain um, block-based implementations. So what does that mean? Well, that means iSCSI and uh, things like that, a little bit more enterprise-level type implementations. The problem with iSCSI is that if you do want to do um, multi-user multi, multi um, user access to an iSCSI device, you actually have to license quite expensive software to go over the top of that. You know, I'm trying to keep this all commodity and um, you get what you buy when you buy it sort of scenario and not really focusing on that. I want to see what we can get out of, you know, the software, etc. that's ubiquitous, you know, Samba 3 and NFS, etc. So if you're on the Linux server, which is what I prefer, I'm, I prefer Linux, it's more versatile. You can get, you can go to um, Windows and Mac from a Linux server pretty easily uh, and more proficiently. You do get hit because RDMA is not so much, have, has as much access to you. So with that hit, if you have a lot of a server with quite a lot of CPU power to take care of the IO, you're talking about 60 to 70% um, of line rate. Still pretty good when we're talking about um, 40 or 56 um, megabit a second. So it's a little bit of a drawback, but it's still extremely fast, much faster than usually the most common um, HD um, online subsystems, you know, big dr drive arrays. You're talking about maybe 2,000 megs or two, two to 3,000 uh, megabytes a second on those. So you can still pretty much supply them quite a lot of data, even if you're using a, a Linux server with um, a Samba or an NFS type implementation. So those are the sort of limitations we're looking at right now with those protocols using this new type of high performance networking infrastructure. So it's really good in post-production. Um, it's something you should be looking at. Uh, just a quick plug for me, uh, the finishing room, I've set up a post-production facility recently for people finishing the film, wanted to do a color grade to a theater with a, a projector, a DCI projector, giving the full P3 color space and not off just a small screen. So you're the only real way to, to finish your film, if you ask me, in terms of the emotional impact of a projected picture compared to a, uh, a picture on a 24-inch screen. And plus, uh, we also do DCI mastering and certification, or sort of Dolby approved here. Um, so come and see me if you're in Melbourne, Australia, and want to do any of that. But of course, when I'm talking about this, people bring in a lot of data, and so moving data around, creating DCPs or doing color grades, there's a lot of data to move around. So this is where my interest lies. I'm very passionate about this, doing the right job, the best job, more for less. This is about more for less. This is this this um, video is about more for less. We can get a lot out of these new um, network infrastructure, a lot more than to a degree than we can get out of our just subsystems as yet. So just keep in touch. I'll do hopefully some more videos on that. I'll do my own little experiments and hopefully come back with the results uh, and you know to help inform and to uh, leverage the industry into being able to make this new high dynamic range because this this sort of technology is required if we're going to jump into high dynamic range content. We're talking about high dynamic range, typically it's 4K, typically it's high frame rate, typically 60, typically it's 10, usually 12 bits uh, uh, per pixel. That's a lot of data, a lot more than we're used to doing. And if you're doing anything like that over SDI, unfortunately it's not going to work on a 10 gigabit network, you need something more. And that's why I've been focusing on 40 uh, gigabit is where we need to go because if we want to do the new standards, that's where we need to be or further up. So anyway, that's James Gardner, the Cinesec Geek. I hope you enjoy this discussion on ultra high uh, performance networking and we'll try and keep on top of it. And if you're interested, you can try it yourself. It's all a lot of fun. Um, bye for now.